the James Webb Space Telescope a one-of-its-kind masterpiece, a multi-billion dollar project, and the biggest telescope ever in space has finally begun its action after about one and a half months of its nerve-wracking launch on Christmas. A telescope that is built to look as far as 14 billion years into the past to the point in the evolution of the universe when the first stars were being formed. James Webb Space Telescope is going to unravel the hidden truths of this massive universe. To do so, it has to perform perfectly up in space, just like its perfect launch and unfolding. And now all eyes are set to just one thing, the first detection by this masterpiece. Welcome back to the Cosmos Lab, your one station for all the news from space. Join us in today's video to find out all about the first discovery of the telescope Paragon. Everything about the James Webb Space Telescope, from its conception to its launch, has been nerve-wracking for the scientists. After the successful launch on Christmas from Ariane Space's ELA-3 launch complex at Europe's spaceport located near Kourou, French Guiana, many thought that the most difficult part had been done, but that was just the beginning. The time of sleepless nights began when the telescope started its 29 days of space origami. Bill Ox, web project manager at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, Greenbelt, Maryland, said, When I started out in this business 40 years ago, the first lesson I got taught was to avoid deployments in orbit, but Webb can't avoid it. Webb will have to perform some of the most complex deployment sequences ever attempted. They knew what they have been building and what's going to take for it to be fully functional in space. Now the telescope has arrived at its destination after traveling a million miles, where it has begun the process of cooling down, calibrating its mirror and instruments, and detecting the first light. And that's another major test for the scientists. First light is an important milestone for any telescope, as it is the point where starlight is detected by the observatory and its various instruments. Through this, the observers can enable a months-long alignment of the telescope. Webb's first light came from a star known as HD 84406. It is a sun-like star and is located 241 light-years from Earth and part of the constellation Ursa Major, the Great Bear. Now, if you think that Webb has started taking pictures and began a new era of space observations, then that's not the case. These images are not going to be used for research purposes. Rather, they are going to help Webb's mission control team to align the 18 golden segments of the telescope's 21-foot-wide, 6.5-meters main mirror. So, these images are not the way we expected the telescope to show us, but it's exactly what NASA had expected, and over time, it will be able to adjust to segments to bring the image into focus. NASA Webb Telescope on Twitter posted, Our NIR CAM instruments detectors saw their first photons of starlight. While NASA Webb is not yet ready for science, this is the first of many steps to capture images that are, at first unfocused, used to slowly fine-tune the optics. HD84406 was chosen as calibration target by NASA because it is moderately bright, located in an isolated area of the sky, devoid of other bright objects, and was ideal for JWST's first light. Calibration is now the most important part because it is a part that will lead to some of the best captures from space. Now, just as it took time for any other aspect of the telescope, the calibration is also going to take time. This is because of the size of Webb's mirror, which is 273 square feet, 25 square meters. But more importantly, the segment style that consists of 18 individual honeycomb-shaped mirrors that are going to be one large sunflower. John Mather, a Nobel laureate and astrophysicist who also works at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, said, First, we have to find the images that all of those 18 different hexagons are making, then figure out which one is which, and then start sending commands to the little motors that move the viewers around to get them in the right place. When the scientists were performing the calibration of James Webb's predecessor, the Hubble, the iconic observatory that has been operating for 30 years, it was not what we are yet to witness with the James Webb. Hubble's primary mirror has a total surface area of about 48 square feet, 4.5 square meters, and that's way smaller than the Webb. Even though James Webb is going to take time, but it's more reliable than the Ricci Chretien reflector from Hubble. After all, we have come a long way since the Hubble was designed in the 1980s. Hubble had a problem with that single hyperbolic mirror, which necessitated a servicing mission to fix an optical flaw. With Webb's adjustable segments, this shouldn't be an issue. Now, over the following three months, NASA will nudge each of the gold-coated beryllium panels into place, 
reducing 18 points of light to one giant sunflower. In an update, NASA said, the early engineering imagery produced during this stage in the process, called segment image identification, stitches together more than 1,000 images to form 18 unfocused versions of a single star. This serves as the starting point for gradually aligning Webb's mirror segments into one precise system. Once complete, Webb will be ready for its mission to peer deeper into the universe than ever before. But there is something that needs to be attained before the telescope can start its function. The gigantic telescope needs to chill out. As the James Webb is designed to operate in the mid-infrared, any errant heat could ruin those observations. So, for this reason, it needs to be chilled. Webb's equipment, particularly NRI CAM, will operate at extremely low temperatures in order to examine the universe's earliest stars. Because these stars are so far away, the light released by them is only observable at infrared wavelengths. Because infrared radiation is essentially heat, Webb must be as cold as possible in order to prevent interference as much as possible. Webb's massive sun shield, as the name suggests, shields the telescope and cameras from direct sunlight as well as sunlight reflected from Earth and the Moon. Everything on the sun shield's cold side is passively cooling and radiating heat into deep space. This will continue until the telescope and the three near-infrared or NIR sensors attain a steady state temperature at which the milliwatts of energy passing through the sun shield, plus heat created by the equipment's own electronics, perfectly balances the heat loss into space. As per the space agency, the primary mirror will cool down to below 50 Kelvin or about minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit and the NIR instruments will reach about 40 Kelvins or about minus 388 degrees Fahrenheit. Webb's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, requires much lower temperatures. MIRI will be cooled using a closed-cycle gaseous helium cryocooler, or refrigerator, to temperatures below 7 Kelvins in addition to passive cooling. The near-infrared instruments are also cooling. The Webb team deployed heaters early in the cooling phase to keep the instruments warmer than the cold side structures, preventing water ice from developing on the optical surfaces. But that's all behind us now, and the equipment and detectors are cooling perfectly. Cooling an infrared telescope is a precise and important operation that ensures the instrument's effectiveness and, eventually, the spectacular research. Webb needs to be very cold for its instruments to pick up subtleties in galaxies, exoplanets, and other objects it is examining. Mather said that individual photons are starting to register in the telescope's detectors. He said, no images to show you yet, but it will be soon, I hope. Webb's initial photographs for scientific purposes are scheduled to be released to the public in late June or early July. NIR CAM will continue to stare at HD 84406 as Webb's optics specialists reposition the mirror segments in nanometer scale steps to produce a flawlessly smooth surface. This work is planned to run through the end of April. Only then can the various science instruments begin to properly train their eyes on items in the nearby and distant universes. James Webb will need to go through a rigorous commissioning procedure for another five months before it can begin working. Bagona Villa, Webb Instrument Systems Engineer at NASA Goddard, in a pre-launch briefing, said, In total, we will have six months of commissioning, a month deployment, three months to align the mirrors, then two months calibrating the science instruments. For the time being, the JWST team's next significant milestone, along with mirror alignment, is to finish cooling all of the equipment, including MIRI, which will reach its extremely low temperature range by early April. Then it'll be time for what everyone has been waiting for. After Webb completes its six-month commissioning period, it will begin a series of exoplanet surveys. One such initiative will investigate 11 super-Earths or worlds that are between the sizes of Earth and Neptune. In our solar system, there are no such worlds. Along with that, we are going to see the first stars and galaxies that emerged from the dust and gas of the early universe, only a few million years after the Big Bang. Webb is orbiting the Earth-Sun L2 Lagrange point, which is located beyond the Moon's orbit. This location enables Webb to remain motionless without consuming too much fuel, which is in short supply. Fortunately, NASA currently estimates Webb has enough fuel in the tank to keep it operational for the next 20 years. Until now, everything is going as planned. Mather says, I'm thrilled with how well we're doing. Nothing has come up that we couldn't solve. We hope that nothing unsolvable comes up as the mighty James Webb Space Telescope cannot afford to go wrong. For why, you can see our previous videos related to the telescope. With that, we have come to the end of our video. 
The James Webb Space Telescope is going to revolutionize space research and we are going to have the answers we have been longing for. Hit the like button if you agree and share your views in the comments section below. Until next time, have a great day and thank you for watching.